All right, now that I think we have a pretty good handle on the electric field, what we're going to do is talk about potential energy, and we'll come back to this after we go over our quiz. So, for potential energy, um, this is electric potential energy. What we're going to do is imagine that we have two charges. We'll say this is Q1. We'll say this is Q2. And in this case, We'll say that they're both positive. If we want to find the potential energy stored between these two charges, first off, is there potential energy stored between these two charges? Well, what do I know that positive charges want to do more than anything else? They want to repel. So if we bring two positive charges together like this, we can imagine that there is, um, and hopefully this isn't too far of a stretch for you, can imagine there's a giant compressed spring in here. And I'm holding these two charges against that giant compressed spring and when I let go of those charges the spring will release and they'll fly apart. Now in reality there is no spring. It's just how these electrical forces work. So my potential energy and the way that we're going to define this okay is the the work required to bring charge 2 or the second charge or whatever it is from an infinite distance away to its position That's how we're going to define potential energy. The work required to go from infinity to here. And the reason we're doing that is because um, at infinity, that's a terrible at sign. Um, at infinity, potential energy is zero. The force is zero. It doesn't take any work to move anything around at infinity. That's why we use that as a point. Now, next year, if you decide to take AP, we'll, we'll talk about what it means to actually do this. But for now, imagine that we're just pushing this thing up a hill. Push it up a hill. Height the hill is zero at infinity. So here, my electrical potential energy, U, is just going to be K times Q1 times Q2 divided by R. And our reasoning behind this formula really comes from calculus, but if we, if we remember before, since we're saying it's the work required for me to bring Q2 from infinity to this position, that work is going to be close to my force times the distance that I move the thing. Now because of some calculus tricks, it ends up working like KQQ over R. <clears throat> we get a fun situation though when we, when we take the same positive charge uh, Q1 and we bring it near instead of Q2 being positive uh, a negative charge of Q2 now in this situation my force so the force of Baker pushed this thing in the direction that I was moving it in this case these two things want to be together more than anything else Sorry about that. These two charges want to be together. So when I bring them to each other, I'm actually keeping them apart. Because what that negative charge and that, ne that positive charge want to do is slam together. So what I'm doing is holding them apart. So I do negative work from infinity to my location. Okay, So in this case, my potential energy is still kq1 q2 over r, but because one of those is negative and one of those is positive, I have a negative potential energy. When I let go of these things, they release energy and they fly apart. When I let go of these two down here, they fly 
together. Now, finding the electric potential energy really is as easy as using this equation. We're going to look at an example uh, that's a little bit more complicated next. It's called the work of assembly. Um, so let's imagine that I have here a positive charge of, of 2 nanocoulombs. Here another positive charge of 2 nanocoulombs. And here yet a third charge. This time it's going to be 3 nanocoulombs. This is charge 1, this is charge 2, and this is charge 3. And we're going to say that these charges are all uh, 2 meters apart. And the distance between these two charges is 2 meters. Now, the work of assembly is, is what we're going to call total potential energy. Now, the work of assembly. So think of this. We don't have these two charges here. Just this one. So the first thing we're going to do is bring this 2 nanocoulomb charge from infinity to its current location. Well, when I did that, total potential energy, I did the work between KQ1 and Q2 over now the distance that's separating them. Then when I bring in this 3 nanocoulomb charge, I'm doing work against the first one and the second one. So it's K times Q3 times Q1 over the distance they are from each other. That's a different R. We'll call it R2. But I also did work against this charge plus KQ2 Q3 over the distance separating them. So what I really am looking at is the potential energy between these two charges, the potential energy between these two charges, and the potential energy between these two charges. But they're all interacting with each other when I bring them together, so I have to consider all of their different potential energies. 